Hi everyone, this is TOJ. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, we'll be running through equalization in house music. Now, EQing is extremely important and often misused. Understanding frequencies and how to manipulate them is perhaps the greatest challenge when producing. All right, EQs give us a comprehensive control over the tonal presentation of each instrument. So let's get amongst it. So on the right here, I've got a snare drum. There's the pattern, it's at 128 BPM. All right, it's loaded in simpler, which is down here. It's the same snare that I used in my compression tutorial. All right, let's press play. There she is. All right, now let's get an equalizer. So I'm gonna be using the Fab Filter Pro Q. Really nice piece of kit. Very easy to use and sounds fantastic. So, this is the interface here. Now, the first thing I do when I'm EQing an instrument, I turn on the analyzer, just down here. Pre-Q is the one I wanna select. And that gives me the outline of what my snare drum is doing. So let's look at the frequency spectrum. So, 50 hertz to 200 hertz are my lows, right? So 50 to 200 are my lows. 200 hertz right through to 2000 hertz are my low mids, okay, which is that little section there. My high mids are from 2000 hertz through to 6000 hertz, bit of a smaller gap, there it is. All right, from 6,000 hertz through to 20,000 hertz are my highs, okay? So anything after 20,000 hertz, we can't really hear, and anything below 50 hertz, we can't hear. We can feel the vibration, but we physically can't hear it, all right? So, I'll show you what I do when I EQ an instrument. Now, this snare drum's got a lot of bottom end into it. Sometimes you can't really hear it, but it's there. It creates mud in the mix, and against a bass drum and a bass line, it just sounds shit. It takes away the attack, it sounds muddy, it floods the mix, it just doesn't sound nice. So if I go right down the end here, click on the line, pull down, sweep across to around about oh, 70 hertz or so, pull it down about minus oh, 5 dB, there we go. That takes care of the mud. That's clearing some room in the mix for my kick drum, and my bass line, which all sits around about here. We need a bit of space for those guys. All right, now my next order of business is I'm gonna look at the low harmonics of the snare, where all the sweet stuff is down the bottom. Click on the line, okay, push up. All right, I'll push up to about five plus, and I'll sweep left to right. Basey area, right, all right, so it sounds good, around about the 200 hertz mark, so I'll drop that down to about three, you don't want to go up too high, okay, now the next thing I want to get the attack of the instruments, which usually sits at around about 7,000, 8,000, there we go, right in between. So same thing, push it up and give it a sweep back to the left and right. Phasing a bit there. All right, it's really sweet, right about there. I'll leave it at about plus four dB. Okay, so that's basic EQ. And now, the don'ts. A lot of people myself included, when I first started getting into production, I used to boost everything really high. I used to push it up and push everything up like that. And my mixes used to sound really crap. And, and the instruments and the actual sound of the song was really muddy and muffled. It just never sounded good and I could never put my finger on it. And the reason was for boosting too much in my EQ. Now, you just want to keep it fairly modest. I usually don't go above probably five maximum unless I'm using it as an effect 
I sometimes keep it around about two, three. In the highs, I tend to go up a little bit more between about, say, three to five, just like that. And I reckon that sounds pretty good. Now, if I turn it off, it sounds a little bit muffled. doesn't sound quite as crispy. Turning it on, it really picks up. It sounds nice. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the other controls. So underneath here, right, we've got the frequency. Same thing as what we are doing when we were sweeping, it moves it left and right. Sometimes this way is a little bit more accurate if you really want to get into it, but yeah, just, just do it manually. Gain, same thing, up and down, just like that. Okay, now the Q, this controls the curvature of the EQ which is the line here all right so if I turn that to the right it'll sharpen just like that and when they're nice and sharp like this I can do cuts if there's something really annoying in the mix or there's some artifact you don't want just sweep left and right like so and you can cut some stuff out so if I press play, sweep, you can hear all the different artifacts, etc. Alright, so if I turn the cue the other way, to the left, the bell becomes really big. Just like that. Doesn't really, I mean I don't really use it like that. I tend to stick to about the middle area a little bit more, just like that push it up and you can sort of sharpen it if you just want a little bit more of a cleaner EQ. Okay, pretty simple. But once again, you don't want to overdo it. You want to, don't want to do too much. It's best to attenuate rather than to boost. So sometimes you might have to bring things down like that. Okay, that bell curve's a little bit wonky. So I'll bring it back. Okay, just want to cut a few things out. Change the bell. Sometimes light EQ is the best way to go. You don't have to boost everything, go crazy, what I was saying before. Don't boost too much. It sounds rubbish. Okay, so I'll just delete a few of these and I'll show you some of the other features. Okay, so here if I pull one down, right here this is the chain, you can change the, the shape of your EQ bands. Okay, so it's on bell at the moment. I can go low shelf, which is like that, okay, and I've got low cut, which is very sharp. You can use this if there's crap loads of mud and it just sounds rubbish, cut it all out, just get rid of it, okay, there's that one, I'll delete this one and I'll show you the high end, so if I pull that down, that's a high shelf, like that, so that's high shelf. Often you can do that for kicks if they've got too much high end and it's clashing with your clap and your hat. And then also high cut. Just like so. Alright. Too easy. Just remember, keep your EQing very simple. Don't overdo it. And the most important tip, don't EQ soloed. Always have your other instruments running. If you EQ soloed, it's going to sound good, of course, but when you add in all your other instruments, like your kick, your percussion, your synths, sometimes like a snare or whatever you're EQing won't sound right. And it doesn't sound right is because you're EQing it soloed. You want to EQ it with everything on. It's got to fit the mix, okay? So always EQ with every other instrument turned on, not soloed, all right? Okay, that just about does it for EQ basics. I'll do a few more tutorials on kick drums and on the mixing stage. Um, don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Also subscribe and be my friend on YouTube. Thanks guys. Um, if you have any problems, let me know. Just drop me a line and I'll get back to you. Cheers.